Welcome. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve word problems using basic trigonometric functions. That is your sine, cosine, and your tangent. Now to do that, to, do, to apply your trigonometric functions, you have to have set up a right triangle. And basically you can see here is we have a whole bunch of words. And that's why usually people do not like doing some word problems. It's because we have to set up our right triangle and then determine which function we're going to use and then, we're gonna ha then we can go ahead and solve. And typically, you're going to need a calculator. Um, for more majority of these problems, we're going to use ones that you're going to need to use a calculator uh, for. Or you know, scientific, or graphing, or a computer uh, will work as well. So let's kind of work through the problems. And I'll kind of show you my step-by-step -step way that I like to solve uh, word problems. The first thing I want to do is you know, read through the problem, uh, take out the information you know, that I know. And for a little bit of sake of time, I'm just going to kind of underline things. Um, and since we know that we're going to be solving using uh, trigonometric functions, we know we're going to have to need a right triangle. So we have to find a right triangle somewhere within all, all of our information. So first one says, at a certain time of the day, the angle of elevation um, of the sun is 38 degrees. To, to the nearest foot, find the height of a tree whose shadow is 30 feet long. Now the first thing is, uh, if you remember, the angle of elevation, if, here's you, if here you have a horizontal line, the angle of elevation is above your horizontal line, and the angle of depression is the angle that is below your line. So whenever I see the angle of depression, or angle of elevation or depression, I'm going to create a horizontal line. And I know that I'm going to have an angle of elevation. And that angle is 38 degrees. Okay, So there's my horizontal line. Um, and it doesn't tell you what your horizontal line is. But think about it. If you have a horizontal line and your angle of elevation is going up to the sun, you could kind of think of this as like the ground. right? So if that's going to be the ground, then we can say, all right, the sun's going to be up here. And we have that angle of elevation of 38 degrees. Now it says, to the nearest foot, find the height of a tree whose shadow is 30 feet long. So we don't know, really know where the tree is, but we can just kind of say there is a tree. And what's happening is that tree is creating a shadow. So you, hear, you have here the sun, and that sun is being blocked by the tree, and that's creating a shadow, which is, from here, is going to be 30 feet long. Because the shadow is going to end from there and then all the way to the tree. Now again, from here, we need to figure out where exactly is our right triangle. Well, what we can do is determine that our right triangle is going to be kind of from right here all the way in here. Um, so we have the sun is 38 degrees, angle of elevation, 30 feet long. And then we want to find the height, which is basically going to be the height of the tree. Uh, we want to find the height of the tree, which would be h. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my triangle here again. OK, so I have 38 degrees. I have a right angle going straight up. Here is going to be 30 feet, and then I want to solve for h. Now the next thing is I need to do is determine my trigonometric function. I could use sine, cosine, and tangent. And in previous videos, we kind of explained a little bit farther you know, what sine, rep, cosine, and tangent represents. So in this problem, we're looking at our triangle. We say, all right, what information do we have? So if here's our angle, 38 degrees, the, base, well, the side lengths from this triangle is we have the adjacent side as well as the opposite side. We don't know the hypotenuse, so we don't know this length. But we're trying to find h, which is the opposite side, and we're given the adjacent side. So which trigonometric function deals with the opposite and the adjacent? And that is tangent. So what I'll do is I'll write a trigonometric expression to represent this triangle. So I can say tangent of 38 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent. So h over 30 feet. Now all I need to do to solve for, I'm sorry, I'm out of the thing. Now all I need to do to solve for h is I just need to multiply by 30 on both sides, 30 feet on both sides. And what I obtain here is h is equal to 30 feet times the tangent of 38 degrees. So now I can go to my calculator. Now again, remember when you're using a calculator, make sure that you're in degree mode. Um, especially scientific, you can be in radians or degrees. So you just want to make sure you're in degree mode since that's what our angle is. So I'm just going to do the tangent of 38. Um, hit Enter, and then times that by 30. And uh, rounding it to the nearest foot is going to be 23 feet. So I can say h is equal to, um, well, let's see, approximately 23.438. 5, 6, 8, 8. So if I round that to the nearest foot, 23 feet. Now again, it's really important to make sure when we're dealing with word problems that you make sure that you round it. So if it says nearest foot, then make sure you round it to the nearest foot. Because um, again, you know, when we're talking about word problems, we're communicating, right? We're communicating the length of the shadow. So we don't want to give a decimal answer if it's asking us to round to the nearest foot. All right, so the next, uh, next example. 
It reads, a plane, a plane rises from a takeoff and flies at an angle of elevation of 10 degrees. So again, we have another angle of elevation. When the plane has gained a height of 300 meters, find the distance to the nearest meter it has flown. So again, we're going to have another angle of elevation. So we have our horizontal line, which again, I guess we could think of. So we have the angle of elevation of 10 degrees. So I'm just going to go and draw that. Say, all right, there's 10 degrees. Um, and it has gained a height of 300 meters. So you can say, like, here's your plane, right? So after it's flown, oh, we need to find the distance. Find the distance to the nearest mirror it has flown. So we're trying to figure out how far it's flown once it's gotten 300 meters high. All right, so and again, we're going to be assuming that the plane is you know, flying at a direct, um, direct distance here. So we can create our right triangle here. And now we don't know how far horizontal it is, but we don't need to. We have, the, of this angle, we have the opposite and we have the um, hypotenuse. So we've got to go back to our trigonometric functions and think, all right, which, which trigonometric function is going to be dealing with the opposite and the hypotenuse? So tangent over here was the opposite and the adjacent. Over here, we're looking at dealing with um, finding the hypotenuse. So we have the opposite and the hypotenuse, and that's going to be our, uh, oh, I guess I didn't write this over here. Tangent of an angle theta is opposite over adjacent. Here, we're going to deal with sine of an angle theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So what I have is the sine of 10 degrees is equal to 300 meters divided by f. And again, f is going to be the distance that it, the plane has flown. So now, to solve a problem like this, I need to get f off the denominator. So what I'll do is I'll multiply by an f on both sides. But then again, I still don't have f all by itself. So now what I'll do is, so then I have f times sine of 10 degrees is equal to 300 meters. Then to solve for f again, I'll divide by sine of 10 degrees. Sine of 10 degrees times the sine of 10 degrees. Therefore, I have f is equal to 300 meters divided by the sine of 10 degrees. So now I just take 300 and then divide it by the sine of 10. And I get 1,727. And it says round to the nearest meter. So therefore. Approximately 1,727.631145. So therefore, f is going to equal 1,728 meters. And again, make sure I'm using that meters to represent that. All right, last but not least is it says a road has a decline. So now we're not dealing with an incline. We're actually dealing with a decline, which could be like an angle of depression. Um, so it has an angle of depression of 15 degrees. After driving 15,000 feet along this road, find the horizontal distance traveled to the nearest foot. So again, we basically have a road. So here's your kind of horizontal. And you have a decline of 15 degrees. Uh, find the horizontal distance traveled. So we want to find this horizontal distance traveled after, the, after it's flown, or sorry, after it's driven 15,000 feet. OK, so now in this case, we have the hypotenuse. And we're trying to go ahead and find the um, horizontal distance. So now, again, we want to look back at our trigonometric functions and say, all right, so we have 15 degrees. We have the hypotenuse, and we have the adjacent. So which trigonometric function deals with this? Well, I did pick this on the order so we could go through all of them. And this would be the cosine. Cosine of an angle equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. All right? And in this case, we have the hypotenuse, but we don't have the uh, adjacent side, which is going to be d. So we could say the cosine of 15 degrees is equal to the adjacent side, which is d, over the hypotenuse, which is 15,000 feet. Okay, So we have a decline of 15,000 feet. We're driving 15,000 feet. And we want to find the horizontal distance. So that is what we're looking for. So therefore, all I need to do to solve for d is I'll just multiply by 15,000 feet on both sides. And therefore, I will have d is equal to the cosine of 15 degrees. Just make sure if you're going to type in cosine 15 degrees first that you kind of put that in parentheses, times 15,000. OK? So I'll do cosine of 15, close my parentheses, and then times 15,000. 
and I have, uh, and then it says round to the nearest foot. So that's going to be 14,489. So D is approximately 14,488.88739. And then when I round that to the nearest foot, I'm going to have 14,489 feet. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve some word problems using basic trigonometry. Thanks.